Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now unveils the mother of all signs for those who have eyes to see. But most of mankind have eyes. Lahum a'yunun la yubsiruna biha. Most of mankind, they have eyes, but they don't see. They have ears, but they don't hear. They have hearts, but they don't understand. Today, I am delivering that it is time to officially recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. This is nothing more or less than a recognition of reality. It is also the right thing to do. It's something that has to be done. In November of 1917, the British government did something which was incredibly strange and mysterious. A Briton, which is now the prince of the secular world, Britain issues a declaration known as the Balfour Declaration in November 1917 that it is the intention of His Majesty's government to work for the establishment of a Jewish national law in the Holy Land. Did you hear that? In 1967, things finally came to a head. On the morning of June the 5th, Israel launched a preemptive strike against Egypt. It was followed hours later by attacks on Egypt's allies, Syria and Jordan. It would become known as the Six Day War. Almost 200 pilots of the Israeli Air Force took part in an incredibly ambitious airstrike. Their mission was to wipe out the Egyptian Air Force, the largest in the Arab world. But now, the United States takes over from Britain as the new ruling state in the world. In the same way that Britain had a mysterious relationship with the Holy Land and with the Jews, the United States now has that mysterious relationship with the Holy Land and with the Jews. Is that by accident? The Jal has completed a day which is like a year. And he's now in a day which is like a month. Phase two of his mission. The United States is flying high now. Because it's about to crash. We are located at that moment in time when a day which is like a month is about to end and the day which is like a week is about to commence. In 1897, Europeans who dressed up themselves in the clothing of Jews, remember, they are Europeans who are parading as Jews, okay? They're called European Jews, but they're essentially Europeans. Judaism is only a camouflage. These people established a Zionist movement. 
the stage was now set the countdown has begun for the Jews to strike after waiting for almost 2,000 years they are now ready to strike to achieve their long held objective of bringing back the golden age centuries before this they had struck at Europe and over a period of almost three to four hundred years they had transformed Europe from a civilization based on faith in Christianity to a new essentially godless civilization hmm? having done that they are now ready to strike when they create the Zionist movement Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now unveils the mother of all signs for those who have eyes to see but most of mankind have eyes most of mankind they have eyes but they don't see they have ears but they don't hear they have hearts but they don't understand Allah says of such people they're just like cattle at about the same time also strange thing happens to the European Jew he's not just making money through lending money on interest no the European Jew gets a windfall a massive amount of wealth now comes his way how the hadith was that the earth would yield up its treasures to Dajjal. Back in 1917, the British controlled Palestine and they promised the Jews a homeland here. The problem was there were more than 10 times as many Arabs as Jews already living in Palestine. And as hundreds of thousands more Jews poured into the country, open fighting broke out between them. By 1947, things were so bad, the United Nations stepped in with a plan. The United Nations suggested partition. The Palestinians would keep land here, here, and here, and the Jews would have the rest. Jerusalem would be an open city shared by everyone. The Jews accepted the plan, and in 1948, they declared their independence as the State of Israel. But the Palestinians and the neighboring Arab countries rejected partition. War followed, and the borders changed once more. The Israelis took over Arab lands here in the north and along the Egyptian border, ending up with most of Palestine and most of the key city of Jerusalem. Tens of thousands of Palestinians fled or were expelled from their homes. These refugees headed to neighboring Arab countries, creating a refugee crisis that lasts to this day. The Arabs refused to recognize this new state of Israel and their resentment at the loss of Palestinian homes and land grew. For their part, the Israelis felt vulnerable, surrounded on all sides by hostile Arab enemies. Over the next 20 years, there was regular fighting along the borders. In 1967, things finally came to a head. On the morning of June the 5th, Israel launched a preemptive strike against Egypt. It was followed hours later by attacks on Egypt's allies, Syria and Jordan. It would become known as the Six Day War. Almost 200 pilots of the Israeli Air Force took part in an incredibly ambitious airstrike. Their mission was to wipe out the Egyptian Air Force, the largest in the Arab world. In just under two hours, Israeli bombs destroyed almost the entire Egyptian Air Force before it had even got off the ground. 
Next, Israel launched strikes on the air forces of Jordan and Syria. By the end of the day, Israeli pilots had won total control of the skies. Israeli ground troops stormed into Syria, Jordan and Egypt. At the same time, other Israeli troops made a bid to capture Arab-held Jerusalem. On June the 7th, just two days into the war, Israeli paratroopers charged through this gate into the old city. But as they pushed through these narrow streets, they came under fire from Jordanian snipers who'd taken up position in the upper stories of the buildings on either side. The Israelis pushed on. It took them a few hours to clear out these last pockets of resistance, but by early afternoon, the whole of Jerusalem was in Israeli hands. In the days that followed, Israeli troops drove back the soldiers of Jordan, Syria and Egypt. In six days, the Israelis had won the war. The defeated nations counted the cost. It's estimated that Egypt lost 80% of its military capacity, and along with Syria and Jordan, suffered over 30,000 dead and injured.